The Wall in Game of Thrones, or the A Song of Ice and Fire novels if you prefer, was built over 8,000 years ago. It measures up at over 700 feet tall and stretches 300 miles across the northern border of the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros. But if you thought it was made of ice, oh, you know nothing. Now, before anyone says it, no, I am not accepting magic as an explanation. Okay, yes, magic does seem to exist within the world of Game of Thrones, or Planetos, is that what we call it? But as Arthur C. Clarke said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. What that means for Melisandre's nether regions, I'll leave you to decide. Let me know your findings. Let's get on with the science. So why can't the wall be made of ice? Well, making some guesses as to its depth at the top and bottom based on clues in the books, the wall weighs in at 8.4 billion tonnes, or 20 times the entire mass of the human race. That's going to exert pressure on the ice just due to its weight alone, 1.14 megapascals, which actually works out as the same as the average human bite. Not all that much. And as I'm sure you can tell me, biting on ice is not easy. So what's the problem? The issue isn't with ice's compressive strength though, it's with its tensile strength, its natural tendency to deform under its own weight, and its ability to flow over very long timescales. And these all occur even at sub-zero temperatures. The incredibly steep faces of the wall means that there are enormous shear stresses acting on the ice. Now, if that ice is at least 30 meters thick, then it's going to act elastically, meaning that the amount it moves is proportional to the amount of stress applied. And thankfully, ice is actually quite stiff. Its Young's modulus is between 8.6 and 12 gigapascals, depending on the orientation of the ice crystals. The strongest bones in your body are only a little bit more than that, so the ice shouldn't creep all that much. But if you've got more than 50 meters of ice, which we certainly do with the wall, then ever so small extra amounts of stress can cause exponentially greater amounts of deformation of the ice, known as plastic flows. And if they weren't bad enough, those plastic flows will cause cracks in the ice. If they're tolerated, well, the ice becomes more ductile and slips even further. If they're not tolerated, the ice becomes far more brittle and likely to shatter. Over the thousands of years since the wall was built, it would have settled down into a giant heap of ice some 40 times thicker than it is tall. That's a gradient of 5%. Now, the steepest residential street in the world, Baldwin Street in New Zealand, has a maximum gradient of 35%. So our ice wall, whilst being a little bit slippy, is hardly going to keep wildlings and white walkers at bay. The solution to our problem of the wall, which still is not magic, came during World War II when Geoffrey Pike proposed a new composite material made of ice and sawdust, or any other form of wood pulp, such as, say, paper. He wanted to build a huge, unsinkable aircraft carrier. Now, that ship was never built, but Pycrete had been invented. The addition of as little as 4% by weight of wood pulp drastically alters the properties of ice. These are Pike's findings. You can see the compressive strength has more than doubled and its tensile strength has quadrupled. Pycrete is stronger at supporting its own weight than concrete. It's got a bigger strength to weight ratio. And its shock resistance is also up there now on a weight by weight basis with concrete. That is astounding. Given that the largest concrete structure, the Three Gorges Dam in China, is over 600 feet tall, a wall made of pycrete is sounding more plausible. Pycrete also has a smaller thermal conductivity than ice, meaning it's more resilient to melting. And crucially, it doesn't seem to exhibit plastic flow. So our main issue with ice has completely disappeared. Given that sawdust and paper exist within Game of Thrones, everything you need to build a 700 foot wall of the stuff is there, apart from maybe the logistics. 
Thank you for watching this video and for going on a tour of the London Wall with me. It's been fun, right? I've made a sister video to this, putting Pycrete to the test. So please do check that out. And of course, you can do all the standard YouTube goodness, liking, subscribing, all that jazz. Jazz hands.